welcome back. Making our award-winning bread today. First thing I gotta do though is just get these uh, trays oiled up nicely with some canola oil before we start up our mix. Just a little bit of the, the prep that goes into what we do here. We're gonna get started with the bread mix. Start off with a cup of sugar, which I've already dropped in there. Okay, we got our proprietary mix for our bread. And uh, the water that you use, temperature is important. You don't want it too hot because hot water will kill the yeast. So you want the yeast to become active and do what it's supposed to do properly. So make sure your water isn't too hot. I'd say keep it around the range of approximately 100 degrees. And our prep table, get that oiled up as well. And in the meanwhile, we are waiting for the yeast to become active and ready to mix. As you can see right now, the yeast is starting to become active. This is where the magic starts happening. This is awesome. The reason we have to wait, of course, is to make sure that the yeast is completely done doing what it's supposed to do. As you can see, the kernels are starting to break open and the yeast is starting to become nice and puffy, real cakey. Once that's complete, I'd say it takes approximately five minutes or so. Once that's done, then you can start to add a little bit of uh, oil, which is what I do, a little bit of uh, olive oil, whisk that up, and then we add our flour and then salt over the top of that. Always add the salt last because you want the yeast to be fed by the sugar as much as possible. Well, that's how we get award-winning bread. And the flour we use is just a all-purpose flour. And the hook. And for all you people making bread at home with your own mixing machines, be sure that the speed setting is on low before you start it. Otherwise, you'll end up with a tidal wave of flour. You'll be antiqued. Great for laughs, but bad for cleanup. It's all coming together now. All right, bread is finished mixing. Move our hook and the excess and drop that in our pot. And we're just pulling it all out onto our prep table that's been oiled. All right. And we'll get some plastic to cover that up. We want to cover it up so it does not dry out while we're portioning. Now we're going to start portioning the bread for our table bread that we use here in the house. And this, this part is kind of uh, a relaxing part for me. You know? I'm working closely with the dough, bringing that love into the dough. And just shaping it a little pat. Drop it on the tray, a little oil on both sides. And we just continue with that process over and over until all the dough is done. This bread is what keeps them coming back again and again. And we get ourselves a dough knife. And just make some little cuts. But not too much pressure that it goes all the way through. We don't want to separate it completely. Just a little bit of a scoring, I guess you could say. One down. That'll stay on the rack for a short while so it goes through the proofing process before we bake it. Proofing is important. Make sure that it puffs up nicely before we get it baked up so we get nice, soft, spongy bread. ready for the baking. We'll go ahead and do that. I'll cook them up two at a time. 
All right, finished product. Here we go, people. The big reveal. After hand making each one of these little loaves, this is our end result here. Oh yeah.